In this class, we will discuss about the single ply clutch and the multi ply clutch. So, if you look at this figure, we can you can easily uh, distinguish what exactly is a single ply clutch. Uh, the basic components consist of a flywheel. So, this is the flywheel you have here on the right hand side, followed by you have a friction surface. So, this is called a friction surface, and this is the pressure plate. Okay, so you have a spring also. So when you apply, what happens when you apply a load or when you apply the pedal, apply a force on the pedal, what happens? The pressure plate which is pressing against the friction surface will get detached. Thereby it separates the uh, engine side as well as the uh, driver side or driven side. So immediately after the engine you have the flywheel and in between the flywheel and the gearbox you have the clutch so when you engage a disengage a clutch what happens engage a clutch what happens these two sides the engine side as well as the driven side get detached okay now in this session i will discuss in detail about the single and multi plate clutch the basic working uh, and how the axial force and the torque is being evaluated so moving forward this is a schematic diagram of a clutch and this is the actual uh, flywheel pressure plate and the friction disc and if you look here you can see that uh, this is the area where you have the friction surface this is the area only that in that much area you have the friction line or friction material now what happens when you apply a force f on the pedal this force gets transferred to the lever and it acts as an axial force this is the axial force say f and this axial force is being transferred to the driven shaft and this shaft has got some splines and it is being it is passing through a hub so this uh, the shaft is being um, moving to and four when you apply a clutch it is passing to us to and four uh, in this hub and when you apply the force f this axial force f a pulls this shaft back so backward to the right hand side and thereby the pressure plate the pressure plate will get detached from the friction surface so this is the friction uh, pressure plate and this uh, this friction plate get detached from the pressure plate gets detached from the friction plate that's how the separation happens and now what happens is that when you release the force or when you release the pedal what happens at the time of compression or the uh, uh, detach this pressure plate compresses the spring so it is being compressed so certain amount of energy is being stored in the spring and when you release the lever what happens is this stored potential energy is being supplied by the spring to the pressure plate and as a result this pressure plate rubs against the friction surface and in course of time the speed of these two components matches each other so that is how the speed of the driver side is being transferred to the through the clutch to the gearbox and in the gearbox we have some reduction takes place and further it is being transferred to the uh, wheels okay so here the entire speed of and the torque being supplied by the flywheel is being given to the given to the gearbox through this clutch and uh, i think you might have noticed so when you release the clutch slowly what happens the speed gradually increases and when you apply the axle once the engagement is complete and further if you apply the accelerator both these sides will run at the two different speeds okay so this is how the system works now we can see that uh, it should it should be smooth it should engage uh, uh, without any kind of slip or it should be it should offer safety along with that certain different uh, sign design considerations are also there so what type of uh, clutch should we use whether we have to go for a single plate clutch or a multi plate clutch for a corn clutch so if it is not a plate if if the engaging surface has got a conical shape it is called as a corn clutch and what type of frictional material do we have what should be the torque capacity like that smooth holding surface conditions 
the weight of the rotating parts all these things has to be considered while we design a clutch so these are the important considerations in the design okay now we have to discuss about the amount of axial force and the torque capacity till now we have discussed the various aspect of the clutch and now we are going to discuss about the real uh, force analysis what are the forces acting on the clutch how it is transmitting certain amount of torque like that okay so if you look here uh, we can see that see the friction material starts from the radius ri and it extends up to the radius r out that's how the uh, system works so if you look here uh, from the center the friction lining starts from ri and it extends up to r out and in order to analyze if we take a small strip in the friction lining let's say this is a small strip at a radius of say r we can see that when we apply the force f an axial force is being act is acting on the shaft and this axial force is this axial force is creating certain amount of pressure in the system so some amount of pressure is being acting here so this is the pressure acting here so i will say that this is the pressure p right so if you want to know what exactly is the axial force acting on that strip say what is dfa it is very simple pressure into the small area da and the small area da is nothing but 2 pi r into dr because the thickness of the strip is dr so that is the small area 2 pi r dr multiplied with the pressure acting on that strip p will give you the axial force dfa now if that is the axial force dfa now the question is what is the tangential force ft or otherwise it can also be called as dff frictional force because when you apply when you when the two surfaces are rubbing against each other and opposite or the uh, frictional force is acting on the system and that frictional force is proportional to the normal force acting on the body right so the normal force acting here is the dfa right so in other words we can say that this is the normal force so normal force when multiplied with the coefficient of friction we will get the frictional force so here that frictional force itself is the tangential force so we can say that it is equal to 2 pi r mu dr into p this is the actual small amount of frictional force tangential force now if you talk about the small torque dt acting on the strip it is nothing but the tangential force into r so that is going to give the value as 2 pi mu p into r square dr this is small amount of torque now the question is what is the total torque acting on the system so the total torque acting means we have to integrate the system 2 pi mu p r square dr from r inner to r out so this is the basic mechanics happening here from here onwards from he this point we have to consider two important theories because when we consider a friction lining two most important theories that comes into the picture is the uniform pressure theory and uniform wear these two are the main theories that is being used for the analysis right now what exactly is the uniform pressure condition says uniform pressure condition says that all through the operation the pressure is constant so the pressure is considered as constant but all through the application if the wear is considered as constant it is called as the uniform wear condition there actually it is pv is equal to c or in other words we can say that pr is equal to c both are correct the most accurate one is pv is equal to c and pr is equal to c is the derived version of pv is equal to see that's how the actual uh, thing thing works okay now uh, so from here if you carry out the design if you carry out forward with the uh, integration we have to 
solve it for the uniform pressure condition as well as for the uniform wear condition so if you consider the uniform pressure condition then we have to say that uh, the total torque is nothing but the integral of 2 pi mu p into r square dr is the uh, integral equation and if we, if we integrate it and if we finally uh, we, we can say that the integral of r square is r cube by 3 and if you apply the limit we are going to get it in terms of uh, uh, the radius okay now comes the change so upon integration and finally we say, can say that if it is a uniform pressure condition we have to consider that the pressure is constant right so if that is the case we can say that uh, the axial force fa is equal to in simple words the area the total area is going to be what pi r square so pi into r out square minus r in square is the total area if you consider totality if you consider the uh, totality that means uh, two friction surface here the, to the total area that is going to come in between is going to be pi r outer square minus r inner square outer area minus the inner area is going to give the area of the strip into uh, the p right so if that is the case we, we can rewrite the equation p as fa divided by pi into r out square minus r in square now after solving this equation r i and r out we are going to arrive at an equation like t is equal to 2 by 3 pi mu p into r out cube minus r in cube this is how we are going to arrive it and at this point we have to substitute the value of p as f a divided by so and so that is how the uniform pressure theory works and upon solving all these things we will uh, we will end up an equation like t is equal to 1 by 2 into mu into f a into dm and this dm is going to be the mean diameter and that mean diameter is going to be 2 by third of d outer cube minus d inner cube divided by d outer square minus d inner square this is the mean diameter equation for the this is the equation for the mean diameter when you solve it using the uniform pressure condition now if you solve it for uniform wear condition from this point the substitution has to be p r equal to c that is the substitution we have to do then we have to say that p is going to be c by r like that we have to substitute and we have to do all the uh, uh, necessary substitution and finally we are going to get the equation like say t is equal to 1 by 2 mu f a into d m here the d m is going to be d outer plus d inner by 2 mean diameter so this is the basic difference even though these two equations this equation as well as this equation they are one of the same the change is happening only in the case of d so if you take the uniform pressure condition you have to use this equation for the value of dm and if you are solving it for uniform wear condition you have to consider this equation for the dm that is the only difference now usually this uniform pressure condition is being applied for the new clutches and for all the other kind of clutches uniform wear theory is more valuable or more useful or correct more accurate is uniform wear value and the reason is that see uh, when you take a new clutch and when these two surfaces the friction surface and the friction plate rub against each other the entire contact area is in picture all the surface will get contact with the other one so the area is constant thereby the pressure is also constant but in course of time as as the engaging and disengaging happens some kind of localized wear will takes place in the clutch so because of the localized wear the entire surface area may not get in contact with each other 
So if the entire surface area is not in contact with each other, we can we can say that at some localized areas the pressure is not the same. Okay. So taking into that uh, taking that into account, we can say that most of the time the press the pressure on the uh, friction lining is not constant. But we can say that. Since the operating parameters are the same, operating conditions are one of the same. The same engine is being provi providing the power. It is working under the same torque, the maximum mean torque. We can say that the rate of wear, the wear rate, is going to be constant. So that is the. If not given, we we have to consider that it is uniform wear condition. And if it is specified that it is a new clutch. Then only uniform pressure condition has to be used. And uh, if you take a multi-plate clutch, a multi-plate clutch, see you can see friction surfaces are being arranged in between the friction linings for sorry pressure uh, pads, and they are uh, coming into picture. So this is the actual clutch, and this is a schematic diagram. Uh, you have got all the parts. and what is the speciality of single plate clutch when compared with the multi plate clutch is that the multi plate clutch can carry the same amount of torque with a limited space it's compact that is the most significant thing it is very compact that is the speciality of multi plate clutch so this is how uh, the multi plate clutch will look like there is the working condition and everything remains the same now another thing that we have to understand here is the amount of torque transmitted so in a single plate clutch we have written the equation like t is equal to 1 by 2 mu mu or f whatever might be the notation f a into dm right the interesting fact is that this is the amount of uh, torque transmitted by one surface this is by one surface only so if you consider if you but if you take the case of a multi plate clutch you have got n surfaces right n surfaces are coming into contact right so if this is the torque transferred by a single surface then the n dot surface will transmit t is equal to 1 by 2 mu n dash f a into d so what is n dash n dash is the total number of active surface is the n dash and the question is how will we find out the value of n dash what is the total number of active surface that we have to find it out so usually so when we when we consider the case of a multi plate clutch usually here we have got number of driving plates is called as the n1 number of driven plates is called as the n2 we have got friction surfaces or the pressure plates like that Okay, so one is n one and other one is called as the n two. Now uh, let's say let's take this figure as example. If you look here, this is the friction lining. This surface is in contact. So this is one active surface. This is another one. This is the third one. This is the fourth one, and this is the fifth one. So the total active surfaces are five here. So the actual value of n dash is five. But they will not give the active surfaces. instead they will only state about the number of friction surface and pressures or well, a driver plate and driven plate right so driver plate and driven plates are given then we can say that n dash is going to be n1 plus n2 minus 1 that is the number of active surfaces so let's say for example i will i will consider like it say see you consider these three fingers as the driver plate and these two as the driven plates so these are getting so this friction surface is completely getting uh, in between the pressure surface now you look at the number of active surfaces here you have one surface here you have the second one here you have the third one and here you have the fourth one right one is happening at the this side and this side second one is having this one and this one so total number of if you engage it like this the total number of active surfaces is four so how we array it three driven pl driver plates two driven plates so 3 plus 2 minus 1. That is called as the n1 minus n2 minus n1 plus n2 minus 1. That is how the uh, equation is going to be like. So 
uh, if the number of dri driver plates and driven plates are given like 4 and 3 uh, the active surface is 4 plus 3 minus 1 so if total number of plates are equal in number 3 and 3 it is going to be 3 plus 3 minus 1 total number of surface that is going to be in action is 5 here you can see 3 friction lining and 3 pressure plates are there so the total active surface is only 5 so this is how you have to consider the uh, active surfaces and for most uh, uh, the most accurate equation is this one t is equal to 1 by 2 into mu into n dash into fa into dm so this can be applied even for the single plate clutch and for single plate clutch there are cases that uh, the maximum number of active surfaces for a single plate clutch is 2 one side active is there two side active is there so in the question if they state that both surfaces are active then you have to consider n dash as 2 okay and for multi plate clutch n dash is greater than 2 that is the thing so if you consider the uh, multi plate clutch versus single plate clutch you can say that the contact surface is maximum 2 here it can be more than 2 and torque transmitting is in the multi plate clutch is more when we consider the single plate but the issue is that uh, the torque transmitted decreases with the cooling weight because of the uh, slip that is going to happen and heat generation is less in single plate but it is more in the case of multi plate clutch because more and more surface area is being rubbing against each other uh, and because of that more amount of heat will definitely develop but the case of space requirement multi plate clutch occupy only a very small space and the cooling oil is not required in a single plate clutch but it is required for the multi plate clutch so this is the basic conditions the force analysis of the uh, single plate clutch and the multi plate clutch and in the next class i will explain about the design procedure for the single plate as well as the multi plate clutch thank you